All right, so I gotta reach in warm right here. We got no airflow. Um, just had them pull the product. All right, so we're just gonna check our ACs before we head upstairs. We wanna make sure the building is maintaining dew point 52, so 72 degrees. Um, cool one, cool two is running. Says running, but my supply temp is 80 degrees. My return temp is 74. It don't look like it's running. So my dew point is pretty low. It could be because it's early in the day. I'm gonna just hit all oh, right fast. Let's see. AC one dairy. Where's my dew point? This is my analog inputs, um, tent sensors, things Not in that sure. nature. Not an engineer. I just listened to people. But I did go to school for air conditioning. Did four years in the apprenticeship program. In my state, they have apprenticeship. All right, so stage one is running on this unit. It's on the... All right, so we got one stage down here. So, uh, look like we got an issue. All right, so we're walking up on another unit. It's a McQuay unit. That's running. Clear sight glass, both stages. Sounds like the other stage is running. I could see sweat on the compressor. That one is running. All right, so let's just check out each um, Set point 32, running at 34. Condensers at 210, running at 195. Got a meat case and alarm. Uh, let's hit 7, 46. So, this case just went through a defrost. Uh, that case had no airflow. So, uh, since it's in defrost, let's just um, check it out. Just check out my compressors right fast. Everything's running. We're at 0%. Just walk around. Uh, no oil. Check out oil on our compressors. That's pretty full. That's pretty full. That very low. This rack kind of needs some love. Uh, look for signs of leaks or anything. What is that? Is that fresh? It looks fresh. Could be leaking. I'll investigate that. Just checking out. Being observant. Just checking. My circuit is in defrost. Uh, we're at 210 PSI. That EPR seems to be holding. All right, so we're just checking out our DDR. Um, as you can see, 210, 210. There's no differential right now. It's not activated. And uh, remember, this is our DDR. Um, scrolling DDR 20. Basically, here's the inlet. Here's the outlet that's going out to the condensers. And um, one on the inlet, one on the outlet. And um, just want to see a differential on your gauges. I think I just heard it in it, guys. There's our differential right there. 18, 30, 20, 35. So it's about 16, 15 around there. All right, so we in drip. Uh, the case just came out of defrost. Basically, we got a eight minute drip, let some of the water run off the coil um, before it turns on. Um, let's just let that time out. All right, so I'm gonna just check my transducer right quick. Uh, 31 on the suction, 212 on the discharge. Just gonna check it, make sure they're reading right. So 218. 34 it's a little bit off i can add an ass uh, offset to, um to match things up but if it's greater than five just go ahead and replace the transducer I'm back over at this um unit over here all right so i just hooked my gauge up we got 187 so we do got gas in this unit it's not flat i'm not sure if it's off on low pressure nothing trip 
I don't see anything trip, nothing for that compressor. Everything looks good. All right, so since I recycled the power, we got to give it like a five minute delay. Let everything boot up. All right, fan just kicked on. And we got five minutes for the compressors. Um, we're gonna see if they call, I override it. One compressor on, not sure if it was for this unit or not. It wasn't calling. Probably wasn't calling due to the open reaching cases on the sales floor. They give off a lot of cooling. Uh, a lot of refrigeration so you know sometimes the acs don't turn on just because it's too much refrigeration on the sales floor from the from the reach in case basically i'm just watching my board it's my cpc board um see right now it says fan on that led is lit cool one cool two um it's just like a regular it's not like a regular unit but our wire signal you know, if I was talking like a residential unit, a uh, Y signal um, goes to the solenoid. Solenoid energizes, pressurize, flow switch close. Um, it does not go to the contactor. Same thing for stage two. Um, stage two goes to the solenoid for stage two and repeat the same process. And then we also have stage three is sub cool bypass. So we send our liquid through the sub cooling coil try to you know basically capitalize off the free cooling all right so this is the unit i did override on it timed out i just put it through another another override this unit wasn't calling i just wanted to turn it on make sure all my stages are operational uh it's very hot out uh, between one and three o'clock it's the hottest peak of the day uh, right now it's very early it's only eight o'clock so right now it's no load so nothing's really calling so part of my process of elimination process uh, you know my little troubleshooting method what i notice is this bottom is all rusted out that's the return um uh, looks like we're probably sucking in more return air than needed outside air uh, it's very unconditioned um all that moisture for the unconditioned air will make it inside the cases cause cases to freeze up early uh, maybe what's happening is overnight when the set point goes up on the acs the fans drops to low speed and uh we still moving air in the building and uh, we like we still pulling condition there and uh it's probably you know driving the dew point up and you know in the morning when the acs turn on everything starts to cooling and uh, now basically we got cases freezing up before defrost it's a mystery but uh, i believe this is what's causing it or aiding to it all right so we know that that case is freezing up before a defrost uh, we can also kind of graph it to make sure uh, this case goes in a defrost nine o'clock 8 15 2100 three o'clock in the morning we can go down to the graph and uh you can zoom in you can kind of tell look at that eight o'clock in the morning this was on the third eight o'clock in the morning this case goes into a defrost an hour before a defrost <laughs> Well, it's not going into a defrost, it's actually freezing up and um, causing a temperature rise one hour before defrost. Let's just check our stepper uh, EPR valve. We wanna make sure that is closing down. Uh, 746 right here. We're gonna just log it and see if this EPR ever closes. If it never reaches zero, that refrigeration could be on all day. Uh, just like never turn it off, constantly feeding refrigerant, causing it to freeze up early. Uh, I, the ideal, if the case is working right, the superheat is working right, uh, this case should come down to temperature, the EPR valve should close, and uh, it should reduce the load on this rack. Some of these compressors should shut off. Six o'clock, we was at zero. 
454 all the way to 6 o'clock so that's where almost two hours a little bit over an hour at, no five o'clock six that's one hour uh, zero zero so it is close. Right, I'm just checking my setup this case is set up for average it's two cases on this one circuit um, my EPR won't close to both cases um, come down to set point or you know reaches its average uh, 33 degrees once this comes below 33 then uh, I vow should close all right so case two is at 34 the other one's at 32 this don't seem to want to come down at that point. Just check for offset. So I'm gonna hit off R and uh, let's go down 46. That's circuit one. Let's see if there's an offset on there. So if somebody has a plus one offset on this. I'm just gonna remove it. I don't like offsets. Case two, where is case two? Right here, let's see if there's an offset. There's no offset on case two. All right, so I'm down at my case and I uh, just hooked up my gate, just trying to check my superheat. You wanna also make sure all your fans is running. Um, they need to be running full speed. Sometimes they look like they could be running, but they could be running very, very slow. They should be able to keep going like this one. All right, so what is that? 18 super heat that's pretty high we need to get that down about six eight all right so we on the pull down now let's see what we bought them out at i didn't adjust anything i just washed it so we dropped them mm, 3.4 then it started to rise i'm gonna watch this a few more times all right so i'm checking my next txb in the second case that thing there is iced up we know that's a this case is set for average so i need to check the other case and look at that power head rust it out uh, i'm gonna probably replace that power head all right so this txv screen is dirty i'm gonna swap it out all right so i'm gonna go ahead and replace this txv with the power head look at it it's all rusted out probably lost its charge here's our new power head we're gonna go ahead and get this installed i also lubed the pins and i checked the orifice the orifice was clean all right it's brand new let's just cut the power head let's see if there's any charge in it so yeah it still has some charge in it even though it's rusted i could have let the old power heads in sensing ball is mounted uh, put some plumbing plumbing on the Cap tubes, slow down the vibration. We're gonna adjust this counterclockwise to open it. Kinda do quarter turns. And then give it 15 minutes, wait, before you adjust it again. Look at that valve, it's starting to leak. All right, so we're just gonna give it one more quarter turn. All right, so I gave it two quarter turns. You wanna give it 15 minutes, in between each turn. All right, let's just watch our superheat, see where it bottoms out. 